This slideshow is primarily intended for people who have undergone Maguire or Starfish training, although it may also be of interest to people who are learning to use orchestral speech. In it, I discuss the extent to which the fluency shaping technique that is taught in the Maguire and Starfish courses, which involves costal breathing, can be used in conjunction with orchestral speech and the jump. For the remainder of this slideshow, for simplicity, I'll call the technique the Maguire technique. However, it could equally be called the Starfish technique, as the same technique is employed by both programs. The Maguire and Starfish programs are very similar and share the same origin. The main difference between the two being that the training methods used in the Maguire program are more regimented and intense. The Maguire courses are sometimes described as being like a boot camp or being in the army. In comparison, the Starfish program, uh, program adopts a gentler approach. It was started by Anne Blight, who was herself originally a Maguire teacher. The Starfish program is also substantially cheaper and is essentially run as a non as a not-for-profit organisation, I believe. Neither of these two approaches have ever been assessed in a systematic way for their long-term effectiveness, and consequently there's no independent data documenting their effectiveness or comparing them with other approaches. Both programmes rely entirely on testimonials from graduates of their courses as evidence of their effectiveness. Because of the lack of independent evidence of effectiveness, these courses are not recommended by the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. The courses are often criticised by speech therapists, mainly because the speaking method taught results in unnatural sounding speech and unnatural patterns of breathing. However, it must be said that similar criticisms could be made of most of the techniques that are recommended by the RCSLT. Despite the lack of objective evidence of effectiveness and lack of support from the RCSLT and other speech therapy services, these two programs have thrived and are now taught throughout the world. During my work as a researcher, I've personally interviewed many people who've taken these courses and the pattern that I have perceived, although I've not collected data to, pack, to back this up, is that the Maguire and Starfish courses do indeed bring significant benefit to many of the people who enrolled in them. In particular, they enable speakers to speak with substantially fewer blocks while using the technique, and they help people who stutter to overcome feelings of shame and fear of stuttering and to overcome their, their tendency to avoid situations in which they may stutter. The technique these programs teach appears to work well for people with severe overt symptoms of stuttering. However, their, techniques, their technique works less well for people whose stuttering symptoms are mild. Overall, I personally believe the Maguire and Starfish courses to be substantially more effective than most alternatives currently available from NHS Adult Speech Therapy Services. Nevertheless, these two, these two courses don't provide us a complete solution. As I'll suggest in this slideshow, the technique these courses teach can be further improved and made more powerful and effective by combining it with some elements of orchestral speech and by using it alongside the jump. Also, as mentioned in the previous slide, the technique taught by these two programs is not particularly useful for people whose overt symptoms are mild including those stammerers whose symptoms have become mild thanks to, to the success of the two programs. Such mild stammerers tend to have different priorities. Generally speaking, they do not want to have to lab laboriously pre-formulate everything they say, and they do not want their speech to sound false, contrived or stage-managed. On the contrary, for them, it's more likely that the priority is to sound genuine and spontaneous when they speak. And for that, they need a quick and easy technique that they can employ just to rescue them on the odd occasions when they get stuck. As I will discuss in this slideshow, for such individuals, the jump is more appropriate. 
So what do these two programs involve? Essentially they're both intensive courses run over four consecutive days during which students are taught a fluency shaping technique which shares some similarities to orchestral speech but which is also combined with a form of breathing called costal breathing. Over the four day period student pra students practice this type of breathing intensively. First of all they practice costal breathing on its own and then in conjunction with the fluency shaping technique. In the beginning they practice one-to-one -one with a tutor who is himself a person who stutters who has learnt the technique on a previous occasion. Throughout this training students are required to maintain eye contact with the trainer. Then once a student has become accustomed to using the technique they're required to go out and use it with lots of strangers in a local town or city and also to get up and give a public speech. The process as a whole involves facing many feared situations and potentially provides an excellent opportunity to overcome some of those fears. In addition to the practical training, students attend lectures where some of the background theory of stuttering is explained. After the four-day course is over, students are welcome to attend refresher courses and to act as, student, as, as tutors to new students who are taking the course for the first time. Inviting students to come back and teach the method to new students is seen as a good way of ensuring that students continue to practice and use the techniques themselves. After the initial course, students are also invited to join an extensive telephone support network through which they can speak to others who have taken the course and can practice it together. The technique itself is quite straightforward. Before starting to use it, you first have to practice doing lots of costal breathing without speaking, just to make yourself familiar with that way of breathing. It involves using your intercostal muscles to quickly fill your lungs with air through your mouth, and then letting the air flow back out also through your mouth of its own accord. Having learnt how to breathe in that way, you can then start using it for speech. Prior to starting to breathe an utterance, first establish the pattern of costal breathing. To do so, it's helpful, although not absolutely necessary, to take a couple of costal breaths before, starting to, uh, before attempting to speak. While you're taking these breaths, you can establish eye contact with your conversation partner and you can also pre-formulate exactly what it is that you want to say. And then, perhaps from the third costal breath onwards, start speaking, uttering not more than a couple of words on each out-breath. It's important, once you've decided to start speaking on, on an out-breath, to really go for it and to complete the one or two words you intended to say on that out-breath confidently and assertively without hesitation. You can tell when someone's speaking in this way because you can generally hear the quick in-breath they take before they start speaking. I'll speak the next sentence using the technique to give you an idea of how it sounds. When you feel confident with the technique, you can start to speak more words on each out breath and your speech can approximate more to normal speech. If you find yourself blocking when using this technique, the advice they give is to go back and try those words again with costal breathing and additionally using soft onsets and slides. In general, if you use this technique consistently, it works well and prevents you from blocking. However, if you wait until you find yourself blocking before you start using it, it doesn't work so well. Consequently, they recommend using it all of the time, irrespective of whether or not you think you're likely to block. As you may have noticed from my description in the previous slide, 
The technique shares much in common with orchestral speech. In particular, it prompts the speaker to pre-formulate what he wants to say. And the, require to is the requirement to establish a rhythm of costal breathing prior to speaking prompts the speaker to focus on the timing of speech rather than on the quality of articulation. Cleverly, both pre-formulation and the focus on timing are achieved automatically, simply by insisting that the speaker uses costal breathing. Consequently, the speaker doesn't need to make a conscious effort to pre-formulate or to focus on the timing. As with orchestral speech, students are instructed never to use force to get words out. The importance of soft onsets and gentle articulation is emphasised, especially at times of difficulty. And in this way, the tendency to overuse glottal stops is prevented. Of course, as with orchestral speech, the end product sounds a bit artificial. Indeed, it sounds more artificial than orchestral speech. Although this is in some ways a disadvantage, the requirement that the speaker must be willing to accept a degree of artificial soundingness forces him to abandon any desire for perfect sounding speech. Abandoning this desire for perfection is probably one of the key factors that results in the reduction in the tendency to block. Essentially, by forcing the speaker to accept a less than ideal way of speaking, the technique leads to a lowering of the release threshold, thus enabling words to be executed more easily. Perhaps the main strengths of the Maguire technique are that it's easy to learn and at least in some situations it really does work. In particular, it really does substantially reduce both blocking and secondary symptoms, especially avoidance related secondary symptoms. Consequently, for people who block a lot and or who avoid a lot, it can substantially improve their communication ability. It works especially well in situations where the speaker already knows exactly what he wants to say and where there's not too much time pressure. It's less successful in spontaneous conversational settings. Because the focus on timing is established through coordinating word onsets with the start of each outbreath within an established pattern of costal breathing, this technique works very well for single word utterances. Indeed, it may work better for single word utterances than syllable timed speech or orchestral speech. The Maguire technique does, however, also have some disadvantages compared to orchestral speech. For a start, it tends to lead to speech that sounds more artificial and even somewhat disconcerting to listeners. There are several reasons for this. The requirement to take frequent in-breaths can make utterances sound artificially fragmented. And the sudden in-breaths can themselves be somewhat unsettling to listeners who don't understand what's going on, especially when coupled with the strong focus on eye contact and the adoption of a more assertive voice than normal. However, many of these disadvantages become less once a student has settled into using the technique and feels more comfortable making eye contact and more confident to utter a greater number of words on each outbreath. A more major disadvantage of the technique as it's taught in the Starfish and Maguire programs is their insistence that speakers should keep going back and keep trying to say words that won't come out. This policy means that if the speaker does start to have difficulty executing some of the words, he's likely to stop moving forward at a reasonable rate. Consequently, at such times, he's likely to feel time pressured, especially if the listener is impatient. However, apart from the fact that it's not currently recommended by Maguire and Starfish tutors, I can see no reason why students shouldn't simply jump over the words that won't come out in which case the time pressure and all the stress that comes with it can be avoided. Another important drawback 
is that in the Maguire and Starfish courses, students are instructed that from the moment they've learnt the technique onwards, they should use it all of the time. The reason for this instruction is that the technique is quite hard to start using if you've already started off without using it. It's much easier to use it if you use it all of the time. Of course, it makes sense to use it all of the time if you're a severe stammerer who would otherwise tend to stammer all of the time. However, if your stammering is mild and if you're confident that you can say most things without stammering, it's very difficult to maintain enough self-discipline to use a technique all of the time. It just doesn't feel necessary. Indeed, it feels obsessive and may come over that way to your conversation partners. The reality is that Maguire students with mild stammers tend not to use this technique except when they find themselves getting stuck and then they find it difficult to employ. I think a lot of the problem here is that mild stammerers know that they can easily push through most of their minor blocks and consequently they, f they tend to wait until they start to encounter more major blocks before they attempt to use the technique by which time they're a bit stressed or traumatized, and their capacity to successfully employ any technique is diminished. Maguire students may be able to get around this problem and avoid becoming stressed by minor blocks if they were to learn to use the jump to jump over them instead of trying to push through them. If you're willing to experiment with a more flexible approach to implementing the Maguire technique than is currently advocated by the Maguire and Starfish courses, the technique is certainly very compatible with orchestral speech, and the two can certainly be used together. The fluency enhancing power of orchestral speech can be increased if it's used in conjunction with costal breathing, a strategy which may be especially useful for people whose overt symptoms are very severe and or for when one finds oneself frequently blocking on sil single syllable or single word utterances. At such times, using the costal breath to establish a rhythm may at least for some people work better than silently counting three, two, one before uttering single syllable words. Conversely, the fluency enhancing power of the Maguire technique can most certainly be increased if the speaker allows himself to skip over any words that won't come out, and if he doesn't keep going back at such times in order to try to say those words correctly. By adopting this forward moving policy, the speaker can avoid much of the feeling of time pressure and associated trauma that would otherwise occur. So far, i focused on how the Maguire technique can be used in conjunction with orchestral speech. However, the Maguire technique can equally be used instead of orchestral speech as a backup for the jump. Using the Maguire technique as a backup to the jump is particularly likely to be helpful to you if you are one of the many people who have trained in the Maguire technique and who now find that your speech is fluent to the point where you feel ready for an easier, quicker and more natural sounding alternative to the Maguire technique. If you're one of those people, it would make sense for you to learn to use the jump and to adopt it as your primary tool to use at times when you get stuck. Then, on the occasions when the jump doesn't work for you or doesn't get you understood, you can resort to the Maguire technique as a backup method. You can do this instead of resorting to orchestral speech as a backup method. Of course, if on a specific occasion the Maguire technique doesn't work, don't keep trying to use it. Instead, find a different way of saying whatever it is that you want to say, or write it down, or simply give up and try again another time. <laughs>